Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. Let's say you have a couple of uh, colonies at RTN or you get some STN that's going on. And um, what, what is kind of like your, your, the steps that you would take to help diagnose the issue? I won't. I won't diagnose the issue. I don't know what the issue is. We don't know what the issue is. No one knows what the issue is. We have a ton of theories. We have a ton of hypotheses. And uh, me and a small group of friends are just starting to throw antibiotics at the entire reef aquarium. And to our great delight, a lot of it is working. You know, I was kind of set off on this path by some of the coral farmers who deal with enough corals and higher end LPS corals. They would set up a small hospital tank and um, kind of started with ChemiClean. Um, and man, you'd be, you'd be surprised. And yes, I know, like, we don't know what we're doing. We absolutely are taking shots in the dark as far as like gram positive or negative bacterias or using antibiotics to treat uh, microbes, you know, that aren't Witch bacteria hazel. or viruses. Yeah, exactly. Like we don't know, but I tell you what, man, there's a, um, a few different things. Like I have a coral hospital tank now. Right. And it used to be like, if something started going South, we, what do we all do? We just fragged what yes. we could either frag back the bad and hope that it didn't spread or frag out some good and try to salvage that. Right now I take a coral and I throw it in my hospital tank and I nuke it with all kinds of antibiotics. The one I am actually, um, you know, personally, uh, not allowed to disclose yet because it's part of a kind of background research group. Um, but goodness gracious, man, I'll just give it a couple hits of that. And you're like, how did that stop? You know, in my, all my reefing experience, I'm like, that coral is a skeleton in two days or should be a skeleton in two days. And now I'm looking at it. I'm like, how did that not prog progress at all? Yeah. Like, I, I don't even understand it. And so, you know, Chris feels me on this. We're both kind of, uh, bound currently, um, to the originator of these protocols. But I mean, I, I think if you just chemically is, is what I started with. And, um, I think Julian was doing the baths. And then Chris was doing the overnight baths because he had too much work to, you know, just sit there and look after a coral for a while. And then I started just leaving the corals in the hospital tank. <laughs> no water changes, no carbon, no nothing, really low light. And you're like, how is that coral still alive? And then um, out of necessity, when a coral was like fully encrusted, on, like a really precious coral or something I've been growing for a really long time, was encrusted. And it just all of a sudden it starts showing me the signs like, hey, something is hitting this coral. I, I got up to bravery to uh, just treat the entire aquarium with antibiotics. Um, always add a lot of aeration. That is super duper duper key. Not a protein skimmer. Actual pressurized air that is noisy and annoying and in the way and makes salt spray everywhere. That and I don't have a lot of detritus because we already yeah. covered that. And I don't have a sand bed that's storing all the stuff that's going to yep. react with antibiotics. Oh no my god, rock. man! <clears throat> it's it's a game changer. Absolutely. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, Julian and Chris and I can come up on here when uh, we've been unbound by, uh, you know, this information we've been given. Yeah. But yeah, in the future, instead of adding bacteria, I think we're literally going to be adding uh, antibiotics. You'd, you'd think that it would be so shocking to the tank. And I, I, I started so carefully, so carefully and what, nervously. What about um, folks adding bleach? That's, that's something. Oh, that's a Bob Stark That's a Bob Stark I let him have ESV. <laughs> I would never, ever attempt to do that but uh yeah that's that he thinks that's like the best thing since sliced bread i think if you have a tank with a few corals that are super established in the aquarium hobby you're probably never going to come across any problems if you are pushing the boundary getting new strains and lots of different corals all the time you're bringing in zoanthids and shrooms and euphilias and acros and other assorted stony corals, man, you are just, every one is a vector for something the other coral doesn't like. You know, I would say probably the most relatable one is going to be torch corals. 
we all know like you could do nothing to your tank leave it alone everything's fine everything's happy thriving one day you look in the tank it's not necessarily brown jelly but you just lost a polyp it's just gone Nothing stung it because it's been growing in that spot forever. We know this and right. So some of these protocols that we're doing is just like almost periodical where it's like, all right, everything looks pretty good. Let me just hit it with a little shake and bake. <laughs> and uh, for me, the only way I can tell that I actually dosed it is you know, whatever small amount of red slime is gone. And then uh, it's, it's not a week. It's not two weeks. It's 10 days for me. 10 days later, all the corals just look 10 to 20% puffier in a, in a very interesting way. I wish there was kind of a more um, naturalistic approach to bolster up the beneficial bacteria and, you know, switch that up. Dude, man, we're talking about 15 to 30 different PhD dissertations <laughs> on the microbial populations of what's living on and inside the coral, right? We ain't got time for that. Right. We're going to start shooting in the dark right. and seeing what happens. Do, do you think it um, um, makes sense or it's worthwhile to dose bacteria as kind of like a prophylactic to to make sure that you don't run into issues with your tank in terms of RTN and STN? Do you think bacteria dosing could help kind of um, nip that sort of thing in the bud? I am confident that there is some bacteria that you could add to your aquarium that is going to achieve what you're describing. I have zero feedback of whether the additives that are currently available are part of that um, type of bacteria. You know, for me, it's been the opposite. It's been dosing antibiotics to the whole mm. aquarium. I have a hospital tank that I keep saving coral after coral after coral, um, virtually nothing is not working in my hospital tank with antibiotic treatment. So I am, I'm approaching it from the other angle and I know that that party might not always last, right? If I keep doing this all the time and exposing the general biology of my aquariums to a certain strains of antibiotics, um, I might get some resistant stuff and I'm not there yet. Uh, but you know, seeing what I'm seeing now, like this is definitely the route for me. And like I said, uh, you know, we're looking at a, a couple dozen PhD dissertations to try to tease apart. Oh, add this bacteria, specifically this strain of this species, mm. and it's going to push your health in a better direction. I'm having better results going the other direction. Added antibiotics and just hit it with a stick. <laughs> whack, whack, whack.